please rise in body or spirit as we sing our processional hymn found in the hymnal book in the pocket in front of you. these words of promise. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in the words of the thanksgiving of baptism. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister in Christ, Nancy. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite forward the grandchildren to share some words of remembrance. It was once said that family is like branches on a tree. We all grow in different directions, yet our roots remain the same. Our Grandma Nancy was a devoted wife to her lifelong love, Grandpa Jim, and an amazing mother to her three beautiful children, Kim, Kathy, and Ellen, and their spouses. She was a sweet and caring grandma to all of nine of us standing here today, and a great grand to all of our children. Grandma Nancy was the root of our Runholt family tree. She helped our branches grow and flourish throughout her entire lifetime. She was a rare and true treasure indeed. In reminiscing together about the life of our grandma this past week, we recalled so many memories, funny ones, eventful ones, and most importantly, loving ones. She truly touched the lives of anyone she knew. We would like to share our most cherished memories in regards to our grandma's most beautiful traits. Grandma Nancy was devoted, supported, and proud of her family. Whether it was a school Christmas concert, high school basketball game, or college graduation, grandma was there cheering all of us on. She drove countless miles multiple times a week and sometimes had to wear two, three, or even four sport buttons on one given night just to let each grandkid know how that she cared. I think there were been a little negotiating on grandma's behalf when her and grandpa decided to start spending the winter months in Arizona. Three weeks would suffice, maybe four, and that was only if she was guaranteed to not miss a thing. Grandma Nancy was playful and competitive. From a young age, she patiently taught us how to play games like Go Fish, Slapjack, Spoons, and Yahtzee. Around the age of eight or nine, our chance to pick a new card or roll the dice again came to an end, and that's where the real competition began. Grandma Nancy organized card tournaments during family gatherings and even had us bring our nickels and dimes to gamble. Of course, she felt bad when she kicked our butts and always tried to give our money back, but it was only fair that the winnings ended up in her coin purse. One of our favorite pastimes was when Grandma taught us how to play kick the can. Many summer nights were spent hiding around the farm until we were called to come in only to be greeted with cookies or one of her famous homemade brownies. With nine grandkids and five of them being boys, I think she may have had a little regret when she told us that as a little girl herself, she used to hide up in a tree. Grandma Nancy was active and adventurous. In our younger years, we remember the hundreds of weekends spent camping together, how we woke early to find Grandma reading in her chair with a Diet Coke in hand, eager to start the day with a game of cards. We remember the summer days when she would round all of us cousins up and have a slip, slip and slide halfway across her lawn. We remember driving through the Colorado mountains together, stopping by on spring break to visit her and Grandpa in Arizona, and picking seashells off the shores of Mackinac Island. We remember how calmly she responded when Cody and Brenton's own adventure resulted in a BB bullet in one of their eyes. 
We remember Grandma's love for taking us kids along golfing with her, even if we just wanted to drive the cart, and how you could always find her close to a pair of binoculars, watching birds, ducks, and other wildlife that resided in her slough. Uh, Grandma Nancy, she had a sense of humor. Um, she patiently put up with all of our jokes, one-liners, and shenanigans at the farm. Um, she always acted surprised when we'd scare her, even though if she knew where we were hiding. Um, she used to laugh when we'd hide a fart machine underneath her chair and push the button countless times. Um, and she never blinked an eye when she told us she accidentally put brandy in her brownies instead of vanilla. Um, <laughs> We remember giggling at all her humorous sayings like, Jiminy Crickets, or, well, I'll be jiggered. Um, some of our favorite things that Grandma always said, too, was, uh, why don't you go with guys lay, lay on the Davenport? We're like, how about the couch, Grandma? It was always the Davenport. And uh, do you guys want some ketchup with your hot dog? I'm like, well, I'll have some ketchup. But it was always ketchup. Um, back in Grandma's younger years, she used to tell us stories that... Uh, how she was once a getaway driver um, for her friends when they went, used to go steal watermelons from the local farmers. Um, she once put water in a classmate's tuba before band class. And she also put a scarecrow in an outhouse to scare a bunch of her friends. So there was never a dull moment with Grandma. Grandma Nancy um, was also determined and maybe a little bit stubborn. It was grandma paid or no way. If she owed a dollar, you got two. If a pumpkin from her patch was giving her a hard time, she would pull so hard that she'd land right on her tush, get back up and brush herself off. Grandma rarely, rarely ever drank, but she promised us grandkids that if she made it through her heart surgery, she would have a beer with us. And sure enough, she did. Grandma raised her three kids to be strong and call it what you want, stubbornness, fight, determination, these traits were all passed down to each one of her kids. Kathy and Ellen definitely carry on Grandma's gene of being worried about not having enough food. <laughs> but trust me, you never go hungry at a Runholt gathering. Grandma Nancy was compassionate, caring, and a comforting caretaker. The freezer was always full of extra cookies and brownies if you stopped by for an unexpected visit. Summers meant picking strawberries together, licking them, and then dipping them in her sugar bowl. It also meant snacking on freshly picked peas from her garden and gathering to shuck corn and freeze it as a whole family. The grandsons always knew that duck opener meant freshly baked caramel rolls, and we haven't even mentioned her famous barbecues, lefsa, and potato salad. Grandma was our personal nurse too, picking us up from school when we were sick and mending us back to health on that silky Davenport, as she called it. Her gentle, soft hands were a comfort and getting to watch the prices right followed by the days of our lives was always an extra added treat. Grandma was thoughtful, kind-hearted, and warm. She never missed a birthday or anniversary, memorizing every important date all the way down to her great-grandkids. She was, as she used to say, as sharp as a tack. When traveling, we would often receive postcards in the mail telling of her and Grandpa's adventures, and we always loved to see what treasures she would bring back from us, for us from her trips. Some examples were our Eskimo dolls from Alaska or dominoes from Arizona. She would call just to check in, needed updates on her grand great-grandkids, and was always asking for a few new pictures just to fill a frame of hers. Grandma Nancy was creative and artistic. Growing up, it was custom that Grandma made our birthday cakes. She did anything from Ninja Turtles to Barbies, princesses to even WWE wrestlers. Every Christmas, a hand-painted ornament was placed by our stockings that we knew she had thoughtfully made for each of us. We loved the mornings watering her ginormous flower gardens and the nights spent listening to her play the Battle Hymn of the Republic on the piano. Grandma was our personal seamstress, and she never frustrated with the endless amount of jeans she had to patch or dresses she had to hem. We never knew how crisp our clothing could be until we picked our items up and they had been meticulously starched and ironed. For all those who knew her as a wife, mother, grandma, 
aunt, sister, and friend. She helped shave our lives and blessed our hearts with all of her love and now memories. Forever she will be the root of our Runholt family tree. Thank you, Grandma, for all the love, for all the fun, for all our memories, for all the life lessons you have taught us along the way. We will carry you in our hearts forever. Blessed be your memory. reading Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A second reading from Isaiah 35. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come and save you. I invite you to rise in body or spirit for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel from the 12th chapter of Mark, beginning with the 28th verse. One of the scribes asked Jesus, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to Jesus, you are, or scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one neighbors as oneself. This is the gospel of the Lord. I invite you to be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and Jesus, the resurrected Christ. Amen. Nancy Elaine Cook was born on December 17, 1933, in Stanley Township, to her parents Harry and Evelyn, and the family later moved to Valors Township. Growing up with her farm life, her farm life was filled with time with siblings, schooling, and memory making with animals, friends, and extended family. She attended Cottonwood High School, where it was remembered that she was a cheerleader and also participated in band by playing the alto saxophone something that she encouraged her daughters to do as well. During high school, she also met a dapper and linky man named James Runholt. They attended prom together where Jim remembers buying her his first orchid for the corsage, and if memory serves him right, it was purple. Whether or not if he knew it at the time, purple was Nancy's favorite color. Following high school, Jim worked for a couple of years and then listed in the U.S. Army for two years. And during this time, Nancy worked at the, cotton, at the bank in Cottonwood. And when I asked Jim, she waited for him to come back. He said, I don't know what she did in between, but she took me back. I'm guessing she waited for him as she and a girlfriend took a bus down to Georgia to visit Jim at the Army base. Jim did not know that Nancy was coming, and one day someone came banging on the barracks doors and said there were two girls outside looking for you. He walked outside, and there was Nancy. Jim remembers that Nancy got an education on segregation on that bus ride. Nancy and her friend were sitting at the back of the bus, and the minute they crossed that Mason-Dixon line, the bus driver hollered back to them and told them they had to move up to the front of the bus. Nancy did not understand and said, they were fine back there. The bus driver had to explain it all to them. 
After Jim returned to the Cottonwood area, they got married in, on August 6th in 1955 at the Country Church in rural Cottonwood, Swan Lake. The couple began their marriage on a farm in Lucas Township. Along the years, three children blessed their home, Kim, Kathy, and Ellen. Over the years, her primary job was a homemaker. While reminiscing, Jim claimed that Nancy was a terrific mother and that he and Nancy were very proud of their children. Over the years, the family continued to expand with their children's weddings and the births of their grandchildren, and it continued to expand even more with their marriages and the births of 17 great-grandchildren. Once Jim and Nancy were empty nesters, their travels continued to include many weeks at a time in Arizona and eventually visiting all 50 states together. Some great travel memories were made on a six-week-long travel trailer trip to Alaska. Yet Nancy was never more content than sitting on the beach eating pizza with her toes in the sand. On their travels, as the grandchildren mentioned earlier, Nancy would always send postcards so the family would know where they were at at a given time. Life on the farm with a growing family and Jim were filled with many memories, such as sewing their children's clothes, cooking thousands of meals, cleaning hundreds of messes, painting birds and canvases and Christmas ornaments, planting and caring for acres of a garden crop where the kids were brought in as weed pullers. One member of the family remembers her tiny frame out in the garden pulling on old pumpkin vines and seeing out of the corner of her eye her flipping over and her feet topsy-turvy in the air. We could not forget to mention the flowers and the bird watching. Jim and family stated that she did not have a favorite flower. Actually, the statement was there was no flower she did not like. Jim remembered coming back to the farm site one day and the skid steer loader was filled with rocks. Nancy exclaimed she wanted a rock garden. When she had set her mind, when she set her mind to it, she did it. Not long after, there was a rock garden, a waterfall, and flowers that bloomed at different times to make sure there was always a blossom to see and enjoy. She was also known to mow with that 30-inch snapper mower and run over the snakes. Good girl. <laughs> the kids remember that if you heard her screaming that you had better come running with the garden hoe. My, oh my. The memories you get grandchildren have on that farm. You were taught by grandma how to play kick the can on the day that you claimed you were bored. Grandma coming to the rescue when you were sick, she'd come flying into town to pick you up at school with that Schwann's ice cream pail in hand. There were, are even more memories of riding on the lawnmower together and wagon rides or playing on the swing set. Your hours and hours of playing board games and cards together where she did not qualm about winning as long as it was fair and, of course, to teach you how to be good losers. She even provided the coins for you to use as children, which I would bet made it a little easier to lose since you were not losing your own money. Many mentions of the receiving of her famous caramel rolls for your birthdays and anniversaries and hunting parties. So many stories of people hiding, well, maybe appro more appropriately stated, hoarding them from the other family members. And then Jim and Nancy attending your sporting events and school concerts. Fellow members of our community reminisced that whenever she would come to your games, her sweatshirt would be covered with buttons of you kids. As the years got, in, got on in number, Jim and Nancy moved off the farm and into Cottonwood in 2013. This meant that family was just a couple lots or blocks away. These past years have not been the easiest as Nancy's body began to show wear. In the reading from Isaiah that I proposed to the family as an option for today, Jim remarked that it was perfect. It spoke of the blossoms that she rejoiced in joy seeing, and yet it also read, strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. 
Jim said that this spoke truth to what Nancy had been experiencing. Yet the words that ended that piece of scripture also described her depth of faith. Be strong. Do not fear. Here is your God. He will come and save you. It was because of your family that you built together, Jim, that she remained so strong. And whenever there was a need, this village, and I'm calling it a village on purpose, of people were right there with her. As I listened to all the memories that you were shared, one word kept floating to the top. Love. Love. The gospel reading today reminds us of the commandment to love our God to the point of loving with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. It also says to love God, but it also says to love your neighbor as yourself. And I believe that Nancy lived this daily with family and friends alike. When I asked the family how you would describe how you felt Nancy's love, here were some of their words. Her personal touch on everything. Whatever she did, she did it for you, and it was special. Unwavering love was shown when she, when you, where you felt like you were the most important and, not, and never forgetting anything, birthdays and anniversaries, those birthday calls right away, first thing in the morning, and having all of those birthdays and anniversary dates memorized made everyone feel special. The shares earlier from the grandchildren also expressed the many ways that her love shined in their lives. In a few moments, we will sing the hymn, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling. When Jim and some family gathered around a table on Monday to finalize the plans for today, Jim had chosen this as one of the hymns. It preaches the gospel but it also preaches Nancy's life. Lyrics read as such, read as such, and let us today listen to them as if Nancy is saying them to us. Softly and tenderly, I'm calling, waiting and watching for you. Why should we tarry, waiting expectantly for you? Oh, for the wonderful love for you. Can you just not hear her? Can you just not hear her love for all of you? And then these words for Nancy herself, coming from Jesus, come home, come home. You who are weary, come home. For Jesus earnestly, tenderly was calling her to come home. Nancy went home on July 2nd, 2021. We give thanks to God for the life of Nancy Elaine Runholt. Amen. we 
tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me. Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for been made God's people through baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. This day we ask that you would grant your whole church in heaven on earth comfort and peace. Give courage and faith to family and friends of Nancy who mourn this day. Grant them a sure and certain hope in your grace and love so that they may cast all their sorrow on you and have strength for the days ahead. Bring healing to Nancy's nephew, Kevin, after the recent car accident. Grant, too, that those of us who are still on life's journey and who walk as yet by faith help us in the midst of life's difficulties and things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the life everlasting. We give you thanks, gracious God, because by de Christ's death, your Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will ever be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus. And let us now join our voices together in the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us commend Nancy to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Nancy Elaine Renholt. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. May the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit give you peace now and forever. Amen. The interment will take place immediately following the service at the Cottonwood Cemetery. Follow the instructions of the funeral home directors. For those of you who wish to remain at the church, the dinner will be served in the lower level in the social hall. There is an elevator right around the outside of the door here to get down there. The family and others will return shortly. To make it feel comfortable to begin eating that meal that has been provided and prepared, let us pray for the food. Gracious Heavenly Father, you've given us nourishment in your word, and soon you will give us nourishment in food. Bless the hands that have prepared it. Bless the earth that it has come from. And let it sustain us in this day. In all this we pray. Amen. have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory to make men whole. 